Hi guys, uh, so today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make a sand simulation in Houdini. Um, the end result is going to look like this. So here's a dry sand simulation of um, sand in an hourglass and then a wet sand simulation of a sand castle um, kind of been hit by a ball. Yeah, so that's what I'll be doing today. Um, I'm going to start off with the dry sand simulation and I'll go through how you can model an hourglass as well. So first of all you create a sphere node uh, and then you go inside your sphere and create a box. And then you're going to make a boolean so that's going to cut the polygons together. I'm going to display it and I'm going to do subtract B to A and I'm going to move the box up. There we are. So it's cutting this sphere. Cool, now we have a bowl shape. Um, I want a, a, like a hollow kind of bowl, so I'm going to copy the nodes and I make another boolean. Oh, sorry. Uh, I need to make this a bit smaller first. So I'm going to do like 0 0.93 up and then display. Cool. And then again, subtract B to A, A to B. Yeah, A to B. Cool. And then we have this hollow shape here. That's great. Um, I'm going to make it look a little bit better. And I'm going to select this face. And I'm just going to make it a little taller. I'm uh, just going to transform it. Um, make it a little taller. Just makes the hourglass look better. Cool. And now I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to copy it again. And we're going to merge this so we can see everything together. Connect nodes. Great. Um, so with this one, so there's two um, bowls here right now. You just can't see one because I haven't transformed it yet. So I'm going to go back to the second one and I'm just going to move it up. Okay. And, <laughs> and uh, select the whole object and move it up. And then with the second one down here, which is this one, I'm going to rotate this one 180 degrees. I'm just, I'm gonna select the whole thing, uh, and then flip it 180 degrees. Um, so it's flipped over, and then if I just what? Okay, interesting. Uh, I'm gonna delete this node. I don't need that. Just go away, please. Yep. Okay. That didn't seem to work. That's okay. I'll try again. Flip one of them 180 degrees, and the other one. Ideally, do the same thing. Make it a little taller. Okay. Okay. And then, can I select the whole thing and move it up? Merge. Oh, there we are. Cool. Okay. So now we have a model of kind of two bowls, one, you know, the right way up, one upside down, looks like an hourglass shape. Um, we're going to create like the little hole in the middle now so the sand can go through. To do that, um, make a tube node, Boop. and then make sure it's a polygon, and then I'm going to make this a little more circular, make it look better, make it taller, scale it down, way down, make it a little less tall. Like that, it's already in the middle, so I don't need to move it around or anything. I think that's pretty good. And then I'm um, just going to cut it again, so Boolean. I'm going to display it. Okay, so subtract B to A. And now we have a hole in the middle, so that's great. Now the sand can go through the hourglass. Okay, so now we're done with the hourglass and go back to my object and a face uh, panel thing. I'm going to call this hourglass just so I know and then I'm going to my material palette and I'm going to make this whole thing glass so then just easier. Um, I'm going to use a default glass. I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to select uh, assign. <laughs> assign. There we are. Um, cool. Let's go back here. Let's get to the, this. Yep. Now we have, um, now it's going to be glass when we render it. If you're go gonna render it, if you want, <laughs> um, cool. And now, just to make it look better, I'm gonna put some end caps. Um, so I'm going to make a tube, 
and then I'm gonna go into the tube instead of my notes. I'm gonna double click into it. I'm going to put in caps on. Uh, let's make this a little shorter, and then we'll just move it all right up here. Boop, boop. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Also, make it more rounder. Okay. Uh, position it right. Uh, uh, I'm gonna put it this way. Go this way. Kinda. Okay, that's good. That's that's good enough. Cool. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna copy and paste and merge, so we can see them both at the same time. Okay, and I'm going to move this one down. Okay, and visible. Okay, there we are. So now we have in caps. Great. Um, I'm going to go back to material palette. I'm going to go into the wood material. I'm just going to use wood chips. Cool. Drag it in. Select your thing. Yes, and assign. Yep, now it's going to be wood. So we have glass and wood, that's great. Cool. Um, great. So now we have our hourglass model. Um, I'm going to start doing the simulation. So I'm going to create a ground plane under collisions tab. Hit ground plane and I'm going to kind of deselect this so it's not green anymore. So it's just that when we select anything, um, it won't select the ground plane. It just makes things a lot easier. Okay, I'm gonna make this these two a static object. Um, so then the sand will actually collide and interact with our polygons. So select those two and then hit static object. Cool, and then inside your node you can see that it created this node here, which means that it's a static object. And then um, I'm gonna create the sand now. So I'm gonna create a ball of sand. I'm gonna go in back into my sphere. I'm gonna create sphere. Uh, I'm going to make it smaller so it can fit inside the glass that inside it. Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Um, and then with our sphere selected, I'm going to hit dry sand. No place. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Let's go back to my object thing. Okay, you can see that we have our sand here. Um, and just very simply, you can just start playing it. Okay, so the sand isn't going through the hole because I think it's the particles are a bit too big right now. But I'm not going to increase the particle size. I mean, or de I mean, decrease particle size, um, just because it's going to take too long for it to assimilate, and I don't want to wait. Um, so I'm just going to make the hole a little bit bigger. I'll also show you how to make the particles smaller later. But I'm going to make the hole bigger first. So just to do that, I'm going to go back to my hourglass uh, node. I'm going to double click into it, go back to my tube, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, like that. Okay, great. Uh, just so that it will be easier for the sand to move through the object. Um, and then, to m if you want to make your um, sand smaller, you can also go into your auto adopt network, double click into that and go into your grain update node. Okay, so that's where you want to go. And just to make it smaller you can make you can change the value of this. Um, if you make it like 0 0.09 for example, that's gonna make it quite small, I think. So go back to that. Yeah, you can see it's quite small. Um, I'm gonna try simulate this. It's gonna take a while because the grains are very small now. Oh, it's gonna take forever. Yeah, uh, screw that. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that. I'll press escape to stop that. And I'm just gonna make that a bit bigger because I don't have the time to wait for this to simulate. I'm gonna make this zero point zero nine. Okay, that's too, way too big. Um whoop. What like zero point two? Yep, and then I'm gonna play it. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna kind of go through. Kind of, that's a very basic sand simulation. Great. 
if you want to play around um, change things up you can go into your auto dot network and just go into your grain update node and that will um, you can play around with these settings um, just to you know if you want to change anything um, but yeah I'm pretty happy with what I've got here so that's great cool okay now moving on to the wet sand simulation of the sand castle so for the wet sand simulation I'm going to start off with importing an object that I created in Maya. Here it is. It's a sand castle that I created. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave that for now and I'll create a sphere. And this sphere is going to be kind of like the ball that's going to interact with the sand castle and actually make it collide and kind of collapse. Okay, I'm going to put it here. Kill. Okay. Make it. Um, I'm going to create a ground plane. Sorry. I'm going to do the same thing when I deselect it, so I can't, when I, you know, click drag, I can't actually select the ground plane, make things a lot easier. Um, with my ball, I'm going to make it into an RBD object so that I can actually collide with my uh, particles and actually be like a physical object. So I'm going to hit that, and then under my sphere object, it should a whole lot of like new nodes should have been connect, um, created. Okay, great. So under my auto.network, which should have been created when you made the ground plane, um, I'm going to go into the sphere object node and then in velocity, under my z-axis, because you can see here, it's, uh, the, it's, the direction is z right now. So you have x, y, and z, and make this 10. And then when I play it, the ball should just roll through the sandcastle, which is exactly what I want. So now we can actually just make the sandcastle into sand. So with that uh, selected, go to your wet sand over here under your grains tab. You press that and then it creates sand. Great. So now if we play it, you can see that the sandcastle is falling because it's not actually sitting on the ground object. Um, and also it's going to do this weird kind of bouncing distortion thing because it's wet sand, it's just, it kind of just moves by itself. Um, but the ball is colliding with it which is nice if you see here yeah cool alright whatever okay so I want to stop it because none of this is actually what we want okay first of all I'm going to move the sand castle so that it's actually sitting on the ground more or less okay and then go back to the auto dot network so I'll double click into that and under your pop solver, um, go to your sleeping tab and then click enable auto sleep and start sleep. So what's going to happen now is that when I play my simulation and then when the ball runs through it, the particles aren't going to react to it because the particles are actually sleeping. Okay, so it's, a, it's like static. Um, right, so we want, the, we want the particles to only awake and kind of collapse when the ball hits it. So in order to do that, we can go select or well, click Awaken by Geometry and then select our ball and then press Enter. And so this new node here, Awaken Sphere Object 1, has been created in our Autodop network. When we play it, yep, it's going to start. So the sandcast is only going to react to the ball when it collides with it. Great. But yeah, it's doing that weird distortion thing and it's also collapsing quite slowly. Um, so to fix that, I'm going to stop my simulation for now. And then I'm going to go back into, oh yeah, actually, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm in the right node. So Awaken Sphere Object, and then you pick Awaken by Nearby Particles. And so what this is going to do, I'm going to increase this to 2 and this one to 3. Um, when I play it, a little white fog is going to come up, and that's going to show you kind of where the energy is going to travel. So that, um, yeah, you know, it's going to make everything kind of collapse faster, just looks more realistic. Okay, cool. Okay, if we just simulate a little Cool. Alright, let's stop that. And play it again. I'm going to go into the object uh, view so that we can see. Oh, okay, so it's doing this weird sliding thing. It's really quick. I'll stop. Right. Okay, if I just drag that. You can see that particles kind of 
slide. And um, I can kind of stop there if I want to my grain update node and kind of increase both the static threshold and static kinetic to like 10 or something. Just play around the values. Um, cool. Oh, sorry, I just forgot to remind. Back. Sorry, everything's a little laggy right now because um, I'm also recording, so it's not really helping. <laughs> okay. Just makes it look a bit more stiff. You can also, if I just stop, also you can play around with all these parameters here. Um, but more or less, I don't really touch any of this in order to create um, what I had before of this simulation here. Um, I didn't really touch too much of um, everything. Everything was just kind of default. Um, what you can do is um, actually I didn't do in my previous um, kind of flipbook thing I did before over here. Um, something I'll show you now is actually if you go select your grain particles um, and then you click up red sand it's gonna create these extra points um, on your sand particles that are already existing so it's gonna make it look more abundant and kind of slightly more realistic and not so it's not you know it's not so um, important on how many particles you actually have um, it just makes it look a lot better without actually increasing your simulation time too much um, but also I'm also gonna just increase the particle to like zero point uh, like zero point one. Okay, let's move this back. And you can see it's a lot more detailed. And I think zero point one is what I did before too with my um the 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 playback that I showed you earlier. Um uh, yeah. Cool. Um yep, so I'm gonna wait for this to simulate. And I'll wrap things up. Okay, so here's what I simulated so far. I just um here's I'm just in my flipbook, which is um just this button here, um just so it can simulate uh, a lot more nicely because it's really laggy if you just um watch it from here. Okay, so if you just play it, you can see that quite effort effortlessly um you can get this wet sand simulation. Um, I think what I could do better next time would be if I increase the um, the awaken particle node here oopsie if I just made this like a little higher so that it collapsed a little faster but um, everything else is actually quite default like I didn't really touch any of this too much um, and yeah I'm pretty sure that you could do the exact same if you want to do it yourself so yeah cool thank you for watching and I hope you learned something